All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai Ba'asham, Rechak Kudash, the ones to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citation to all that I can put this word with true charity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word even calls God and Jehovah Ba'asham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the Son's name, with the word even calls Jesus and Rechak Kudash, the Holy Spirit. As I always, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to, Holy, according to the Holy Scriptures, as well as. Uh, you speckled bird out there that scattered Israelite foreigners, scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of that nation to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line. Go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, on the brother, your diet from the Great Millstone Branch here in Chicago, and I'm back with you another lesson. And hey, you know, the spirit just hopped up on me to go into basically uh, 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 my people, man, our people, you know, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and you Israelites, man, because hey, our people have a problem with being corrected, you know, uh, being told what what they're doing is wrong you know everybody wants to say oh don't don't judge that man no if a person is doing something and it's de detrimental detrimental to their uh to their well-being why wouldn't you tell them stop doing something man you know to hell with uh pleasing you know making a person feel good smooth words no man if you're doing wrong and you hurting yourself don't you want somebody to correct you man you know but uh i'm gonna I'm grab this really quick because uh because because really what we do we when, when you come when it comes to it the only people that care about our people are the men of the lord starting with the elders and the apostles of the great millstone because they're actually out here bringing it out they're not telling our people to uh go go marry and do all these good things because you know it's gonna make your life easy here in babylon no they telling our people to repent turn to the lord because then you're gonna be healed that's when you're gonna be uh able to enjoy those things but hey this is uh genesis it's like it uh suffer sin yeah, this uh, Leviticus 19 and 17. I'm going to grab another Bible real quick. Because, hey, man, straight up, man, hey, if you love somebody, you want them to do good. You want them to do good into themselves. This Leviticus chapter uh, 19 and 17. It says, uh, yeah, this uh, Leviticus 19 and and, and 17, man, hey, the law of the Lord is perfect, man. Everything is covered and there's no gray areas. But it says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt any thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him, man. So wait, you supposed to love your brother. Your brother are the Israelites. The Israelites are our people. You're supposed to love them. And what is true love? Telling them uh to do right, to not do wrong to their power. Yahweh Yahweh Shai, man. It says, Rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him, man. Why does the scripture say not suffer sin? Because what comes from sin? Well, let's figure out what sin is transgress. This first John three and four. This first John chapter three and verse four. It says, uh, whosoever commit of sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is when you break the heavenly father's law, statutes, commandments. That's when you're in transgression. Right. And what comes from transgression of the law? What is the punishment, you know? This is, uh, this is Romans chapter 6 and 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. So the payback of sin is death. But the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord, man. So, hey, when we tell our people to put down the fucking pork, man, put down a shrimp, lobster, and a crab, Keep the, uh, the the Lord's uh, commandments to the best of your abilities while we here in Babylon. It's not because we just hate and we don't want them eating these things. No, it's because those things put you in a, a, a messed up predicament with your power. That's why you in the ghettos. That's why you hurting yourself. You know, that's why you abusing yourself, doing these things that's, that's contrary to what the Heavenly Father told us to do. Hey, it brings in death. You know, women not caring for themselves, uh, being trained up how they should be according to Holy Scriptures leads them to a life uh, of of distress troubles you know death and it ends in death man but before that death is a whole bunch of uh wearisome uh hardship when if you were to follow the heavenly father's laws hey you can avoid all that and that's what the real men of the lord are out here telling our people man you know hey speak speak comfortably because hey this word comforts us man comfort I believe it's entitled Comfort. It's speaky, yeah. But I'm gonna grab this. Uh, damn it, fuck. I dropped that. Uh, damn it, what was the first precept? Uh, I, I dropped it, man. 
It'll come back. This Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, save your power. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. But a hey, verse 1, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, save your power, man. And the only people that's comforting the... uh comforting the only men that's comforting our people truly is the men of the lord the israelites not the committed uh community you know not not islam not none of that man that's not comforting our people it's been around and our people are still mourning they still don't have an outlet they still don't understand what they what they're doing they still don't understand where they're going man so that shit doesn't work but hey the holy scriptures you know this word yahweh yahweh shai the the doctrine of the hebrew israelites man uh chiefly to the great to the great men of the millstone you know the the uh, great millstone hey th this word is actually comforting our people who who, who want to accept it it's actually healing our people that want to accept it you know because hey this word this doctrine that we have it tells you that why are you in this predicament it tells you that this predicament is not go in it tells you to maintain yourself take care of yourself all the mother religions they don't tell you to do that they let you do whatever you want they uh they let you do uh, uh hurtful works to yourself you know uh, damn, what's that first preset? Let me think about it. Yeah, love working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No ill. Yeah, that's why the men of the Lord are so so on our people ass like that. Because we want our people to do better. We tired of seeing our people messed up, man. You see a family member's messed up going through it. You know? You see people you love messed up going through it. Now, you know, hey, that's their judgment because they ain't choosing to serve the Lord. But nevertheless... Hey, we want our people out of this predicament, man. This is Romans chapter 13, and this is true love, man. This is Romans 13 and verse... I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So, hey, you're supposed to love your neighbor, your, your brother. And, and love is not just a word. It's not just a feeling you have for somebody. It's, it's an action. If I love my cousin, I'm not going to let my cousin do things that's going to hurt himself. You know, that's why the scriptures say that uh, law not grievous. That's, that's that's what I was thinking about. Grieve. I mean, I'm going to go back to this. Grievous. Whew. First John 5 and 3. First John five and three. All right, I'm gonna hold that. But hey, this is uh, I'm gonna go back to this Romans thirteen and verse eight. It says, "O man, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that love another have fulfilled the law. Because when you fulfill the, because when you love your brother, you're not gonna do certain things to him, man. You see, the thing with these niggas in the world, they have no morality. They don't have no code that they follow. And the codes that they claim they do follow, this street code, this gang bang code, the nigga knowledge they have, hey, it still is darkness. You know, they still sleep with each other's women." They still screw each other over. They still commit hurtful words to one another. But hey, amongst the men of the Lord, that's not happening like that. It's actually true love. It's light, man. This is 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, by this we know that we love the children of the Most High when we love the Most High and keep his commandments. So, hey, you love God, hey, you, it's going to come. It's going to be uh, you saying it also with you proving it through your works. You, hey, as it says in the book of James, faith without works is dead, you know. But this is... Uh, this is uh, verse three. It says, for this is the love of the most high that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So, hey, we we hey, these laws as commandments, the way that the Lord told you to conduct yourself. He didn't do this. It's not a burden. It's not something that's going to hurt you. No, it's something that's going to benefit you. You know, a woman being married to one man, it, it, it benefits her spiritually, emotionally, physically compared to her doing whatever she want in her younger years. Then when she gets to the age of 30, 40, she has nothing. She don't have a husband. She don't have a, a house. She don't have a, a legacy. She don't have a, a bond with someone uh, th that she's been knowing her whole life. What does that lead to? That leads to the corruption of life, man. All these other ways outside the truth is the corruption of life, man. The law of the Lord is perfect. But I'm going to go back to this uh, Romans 13 and 8. It says, well, verse 9, it says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, name, and the saying namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you love your neighbor as yourself, you don't want your, you don't want, you don't, you're not going to go and, you know, go commit adultery with your neighbor. You're not going to go and kill your neighbor because you want to want those things done in you, you know? 
You don't you, come on now. You want your neighbor to, to be good. You don't want to see your neighbor being a crackhead, you know? Who the hell likes even winning, you know, a hey, hey, for the for a hey, you I'm gonna just say this really quick, because hey, we got uh famous people amongst our nation that sold us out, man. You know? Well they sold they self out. They took the bag, but watch their people struggle, man. Who wanna live like that? I wanna see all Israel shining, you know? And that's gonna and that's gonna happen ultimately after the destruction of this place. But this is uh verse 10 it says love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law so if you love your neighbor you know you're not going to do anything no ill thing to him you're not going to do anything that's going to uh mess him up you know and that leads to a a righteous beneficial life community for everybody It says, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So, hey, if you love your neighbor, you, you're going to keep the laws as commandments because they, they're going to maintain uh, it, it's morality, man. You know, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, but that's pretty much all I had, man. The spirit just hopped up on me to do this lesson. Lord willing, it was edifying. Call her lying lie. Yeah, how will by Shami? I was shy by Shami Kakwadash. That was to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. So, he tasted all I can put his word with you. Said with you. Shalom. Barakatham and a Bible ball. <laughs>